This is John Berdahl, thanks for joining us with iTube Daily Coverage, and I'm here with Enrique Berragon. And thank you so much for your great talk on small aperture IOLs. Give us a basic overview, and then I'll ask you a couple questions. Thank you, John. Uh, this is amazing uh, uh, technology. Uh, we have the first cases on close to three years ago, and uh, uh, the depth of focus of this IOL is great. So uh, we do a cataract surgery as regular does. Um, remove the cataract, put the IOL, and uh, the great thing is we don't have to worry about centration. Um, so the patients uh, the day after start with the wow effect. So let me understand, if this is basically regular cataract surgery with an IOL that's got a smaller aperture and it blocks light outside of that, helping increase depth of focus. Correct, you're correct. Uh, the, the total mask dimension is 3.5 millimeters. Uh, the small aperture is 1.3 millimeters. So they give you a great depth of focus. Tell me a little bit about your experience with it and what kind of results you've been seeing. Well, uh, three years ago we started with the proof of concept. Uh, so we are allowed to do 20 cases. Uh, at that time we have a silicone IOL, again for the proof of concept. Now we're, do, we're using acrylic IOL. And uh, we have 20 patients, 20 eyes, and they are very satisfied with distance intermediate near. So you're getting distance intermediate and some near, a lot of near? Well, uh, our target refraction has to be minus three quarters. So when you choose your IOL power, it has to be minus three quarters. If you got that, you will have 2020, 2020 intermediate, 2025 distance. So I really enjoyed your presentation, and one of the more compelling things to me was how forgiving it is because you have more depth of focus. So if you do miss your target a little bit, unlike multifocal technologies, you're still probably going to be okay. Yes, this is quite nice because, because the depth of focus, as you said, it is very forgiving. So uh, you can be off target just above or uh, under, under correction, and you will still have very good effect. You know, one of the things that we've always worried about is glare, halos, decentration, um, nighttime vision, and the ability to see the peripheral retina if you've got a constricted thing. Are, are you seeing any of those concerns in your early studies? Yeah, we, we were aware of, as, as you said, at the very beginning. Uh, for me, like a surgeon, in my very first five cases, I was aware about centration because uh, this is a pinhole or a small aperture uh, IOL. So the good thing is we uh, just do the, uh, the cataract surgery as we always do. We put the lens. Uh, rotate the lens 360 degrees and leave it there. And the surprise was the day after we have a really nice effect. Uh, doesn't matter where the, um, the small aperture uh, ends. And I have one particular case that has some fibrosis in the, in the, on the IOL displays. Uh, and the patients still remain from uh, months number three to months 12. Uh, with their very nice visual acuity. So yes, it's very, uh, it's very forgiving as the same um, as a refraction from uh, centration. Um, the other thing is um, uh, halos and glare for the pinhole effect or the small aperture effect, most of those disappear. So what I'm saying is uh, comparison with the small aperture IOL with the fellow eye has uh, regular IOL, we have the same or even lower uh, glare and halo. So that's really nice for the patients. They, they complain from the fellow eye that has a monofocal IOL done from the small aperture. And can you still see the peripheral retina? Yes, we, uh, we were aware about that. So we do a lot of tests. Uh, we do um, uh, visual fields. We took some photographies as you saw in, in the presentation. And you can see the peripheria. You can see the macula. You can take photos of the optic nerve. You can still do uh, visual fields. And last question, do you anticipate this will be unilaterally implanted or bilaterally implanted? <laughs> well, I do have one patient who has uh, bilaterally. Uh, uh, Harry Cart asked me about uh, if one is so good, why you put two? And the, the answer of that question is, well, the patient demands, uh, if the patient has the very first side with the small aperture IOL, and then when the, he developed cataract in the fellow eye, he says, are you going to put the same IOL that you you did on my first eye. And I said, well, you know, um, we didn't uh, think about it. And the guy said, well, this is, in my, my first eye is so good that I, did, I don't deserve less. So he, we went to, uh, with a fellow boy with the same IOL, and he's totally functional, day and night drives, spectacles free. So I, I would say the, the good news is uh, one eye is good enough, but if you have two, it's way better.
Yeah, very good. So it sounds like a very forgiving technology, very effective technology. Thank you guys for joining us for iTube Daily Coverage. Uh, I'm John Burdell.